Hello viewers, Alan here, welcome to the workshop. So uh, the journey of the Lynx 15 uh, engine continues and in this episode I have to sort out the uh, mistakes I made with the crankshaft in the previous episode and then I'll move on and make the uh, connecting rod. So I'm going to get straight into it. So I've made up a new crankshaft and I've made the, uh, the press part here um, 14.05 instead of 14.09 so it's just a little bit smaller, which is going to help, I guess. I, I hope. <laughs> um, I've made up a new piece from which to make the web. And uh, unlike the previous one, I've incorporated the uh, one mil spacer for clearance between the um, this face and the, um, the bearing housing. I've actually included it in the um, in this piece, so I don't have the complication of a separate loose piece. So hopefully that will help. Um, I've also made up um, uh, a different way of uh, handling it. So um, it will pop in there. Sit there. So um, he can sit there waiting uh, for the this piece. I'll uh, heat this up this time. I didn't heat it the first time. I'm going to heat it up to uh, I don't know, two or three hundred degrees, and um, hopefully that will go on. Um, I was umming and ahhing about using Loctite again. I don't think it needs it, but uh, reading through the Loctite brochures. Um, data sheets and such, it suggests that the, the Loctite can act as a lubricant to make it easier for, to press the piece on. Um, so I don't see how that can hurt. Actually they suggest though not taking the, uh, the piece over 200 degrees. We're just about on 200 now, or 190, so we've got a little bit more. Because it's not getting any heat soak doing it this way. Not like warming it up in an oven. Well, that's reading about 250 now. So I think we're good to go. So there it is. It went on uh, quite uh, uneventfully. Okay, so I've got the merged web disc and shaft um, back in the lathe, and I've faced this side off. I wasn't worried about concentricity for that, as long as the face is perpendicular to the axis of the shaft, which it is, that's fine. But I was thinking about putting um, a centre in the end of the shaft. And I was thinking, oh, well, that would mean I have to put the four jaw in and all that hoo-ha. And I thought, oh, well, just for a little bit, I'll put the collet chuck in and see what sort of a run out I'll get with that. And I was a bit surprised. I think that's pretty bloody spectacular. <laughs> and uh, good enough to do the centre. Uh, and I've got to chamfer these corners as well. But I suppose just for the, uh, the the exercise, I might as well check the run out on the outer outer diameter of the uh, the web disc. I reckon that's about 0.02, so I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, I just got these uh, corners chamfered off and the centre in, and then over to, uh, uh, over to the milling machine. Now, long-term viewers of this channel might remember that the last time I used this rotary table, I had a problem with excess runout in the Morse Taper 3 socket. Did some digging, found out that that's actually a sleeve that's pressed into the turntable. So I pulled it out, and that was an effort, cleaned it all up, and put it back, and hoped for a bit of an improvement. Let's see. 
So that has improved things a bit and run out now is 0.04 but I'm still not happy with that so I don't think I'll be using the Morse taper socket for this job. So I've got the uh, crankshaft mounted uh, on the rotary table in the mill now and uh, I've, after a lot of messing about which I'll just talk about in a minute I've got it to running with a satisfactory run out which I'll just show you. So I think the run out is uh, no more than 0.01, it's possibly slightly less. So half a thou, anyway I'm very happy with that. But question, how did I get to that stage, because therein lies the tail. Obviously I dropped the rotary table on the milling table. When I did that, the change in weight distribution on the table, because this guy weighs at least 50 kilos, upset the tram. So I right, re re-tram the mill against the face of the rotary table. I had wanted to use the Morse taper socket in the middle of this and this um, Morse taper ER40 collet chuck uh, but I couldn't get a satisfactory run out I think I had a bit of a video earlier where I'd made it a bit better but still not good enough and fortunately though I'd made this uh, uh, Morse taper washer dealio up um, which uh, I'll put a link to in case you haven't seen it anyway moving on from that I decided I had to use the uh, a different method so I've got a um, a collet chuck with a it's intended to be mounted on a face face plate or something I think anyway so I've got that on there and I use this contraption I ran this down the bar so I could run it around the outside of the table and um, got the table centered under the quill then I put this thing on the table and went through the whole process again getting um, this uh, centered on the, on the table with uh, Many, very many lots of little taps and it took a long time and it w tested my patience severely but we got there so anyway that's all good now and I'm going to strip all this lot down and start working on the profiling the uh, the web it's got to have a couple of big cutouts and another hole okay so first operation drill the hole for the crank pin um, it needs to finish up uh, reamed to eight millimeters so I'll drill a pilot hole Follow that up with a letter end drill, which is just under eight, and then do the reaming. That's as deep as I can go with the current setup, so I don't know whether we got to full depth there. I may have to revisit that. So, next thing is to uh, do these cutouts. Right, well, let's get set up with the six millimeter end mill. I'm going to rough the shape out to start with, leaving a half millimetre to clean out. And for these roughing passes I'm going to go, um, this is 8.5 thick, I'm going to do three passes with a uh, three millimetre depth of cut to make it easy on the, on the bit and we'll see how that works out. It wasn't especially happy about that. I was running that cutter at 1200, perhaps I should be running it more like 2000. Right, let's have a bit of a, a bit of a clean up here. Alright, well I better check what size I finished up with. This is supposed to be 18 across and I just realised, dopily, I was relying on the cutter cutting to its nominal size. I was using a 6 diameter cutter, this needs to be 18 so I was working at 12 off each side of the centre line. Uh, well let's see what we got, hopefully somewhere near 18. Oh well, pretty happy with that. I'm not going to complain about that. Well, that's pretty much finished the major machining on this piece. What's left now though is uh, chamfering. So I put a one millimetre wide chamfer on the curvy bit on the lathe, that was easy. But now I've got to work out uh, how to do a bit of chamfering here. Hmm, new challenge. Well, I've got a, 
a 6mm diameter chamfering bit which looks like it might be useful so I'll mount that and see how much damage I can do with that OK so I've managed to get some sort of a, a chamfer on here although it's doing my head in trying to work out the exact uh, path for the chamfering cutter to follow so there's some hand finishing going to be needed here anyway but I guess I was going to get probably going to hand finish the other side as well so whatever anyway so the, the last bit to do is to uh, round off this corner and that corner and the drawing calls, uh, I think it's uh, roughly, doesn't, I don't, nothing is going to come in contact with it or anything. I think the main thing is to try and make whatever I do there match whatever happens over here. Mostly from the point of view of weight distribution rather than aesthetics, I think. But anyway, um, so the drawing calls out um, a 2.5 radius on that corner, which means the centre of rotation 2.5 in from that corner. So I need to, uh, in theory... <laughs> move the centre of rotation of this thing under the uh, cutter from here to here. So uh, after a lot of messing around I've got the um, crankshaft offset on the rotary table by an amount which I think will uh, allow the uh, centre of rotation to be where I want it to be for rounding this corner off um, and the centres line up at the moment. So let's see whether that works. So. Um, Returning to the, uh, returning the rot <laughs> so I'm returning the milling table now to the original origin position zero zero, and the y-axis. Right. So now with uh, the milling table returned to its original origin position, the centre of rotation is uh, where I want it to be by some bit of magic, which maybe you followed, maybe you didn't. Anyway, there we go. So now I can rotate this thing around that point, I think, and round this corner off. Right, well, I better put my money where my mouth is and see if we do, in fact, rotate around that point. So I make a note of the start point with the rotary tail. It's 144 degrees. <laughs> Looking pretty good. I think it'd be at least good enough for rounding the end off and coming back to where we started well I think I can load a cutter in and start uh, doing some cutting so to work out the cutter path I modelled it in my CAD package and this circle here represents the cutter and so I was able to work out where the, the start and end positions would be and the, the radius of the circle that it's or the radius of the curve I guess that it's got to follow. I basically set the cutter originally uh, about on the on the corner of this piece and out a little bit and I'll be going 45 degrees around each way from there and uh, I'm going to go with several passes and try and sneak up a bit on this thing so uh, wish me luck Well, we're getting a, getting a little bit of rounding there. It's looking promising. Right, I think this is going to be the last cut. So I don't want to overshoot. All right, well, I think that's one done. You can't see it so well from this angle, but I think, I think that actually turned out all right. Bit of uh, touch up with the file on the corner, so I'm not going to mess around with the uh, um, chamfering bit for that. So no, I'm quite pleased with that. Touch that up a little bit and we'll be good. Okay, uh, I've got a reverse it all and do the other side. 
So getting ready now to um, machine the, the second corner and I think I made the setup sound more complicated than it actually is but the, the basic steps are get the rotary table centred under the quill get the job um, on that with the original centre of rotation on the centre line of the quill work out the offset that you want to the new centre of rotation and then you move the X and Y coordinates in the opposite direction to that uh, then you recenter it at that, and then when all that's finished, you move the milling table back to the original origin, and the uh, the new centre of rotation should be under the point. So um, I don't know whether that makes it easier to follow, but anyway, that's that's the that's what you have to do. And uh, sorry, there is one other step to this which I forgot to mention. I need these two faces here to be in line with the Y axis. And so I made up this little um, contraption, which just allows me to put a straight edge on there. And then I could run a, a dial gauge backwards and forwards um, to make sure I had that alignment correct. I think it's a, a nicely rounded thing that matches the other side. So, uh, what's left to do now is make the pin and insert it but uh, finish off all this uh, chamfering with a file. Getting ready to um, in push the uh, crank pin into the web now. Um, the crank pin has to be uh, a light fit into the bearing, which I've done, but obviously a press fit into there. So one end of this crank pin is uh, 8.01 and the other end 7.99. Anyway, I'm a bit gun shy from the last press things, so I've made this little holder up to try to make sure that um, we can get this thing pushed in at the right angle. It's a pretty close fit in there. And that should be it. So just wipe off the, uh, the excess stuff and pull this thing off the top and we're done. Alright, well this thing was uh, a little bit reluctant to come off so I had to warm its backside up a bit more seriously and then it came off without any trouble. So um, I have now got a completed crankshaft. The pin went in nicely, as you saw. And uh, I've done my chamfering all around. Uh, right, so... From here, it's uh, I think on to making the uh, the conrod. Okay, so I'm getting uh, set up to uh, make the uh, conrod, and I'm going to make uh, this piece of uh, aluminium to explain my setup. I'm going to use this bar here as a, a fixture. In fact, it's got a few holes in it because I used it for making the conrod for the um, Webster engine. Anyway, I've put a new pair of holes in there and there threaded for 6mm bolts. The uh, little end bearing will be reamed at the end of this lot to 6mm, uh, which is the designated size. This is a 6mm bolt, but it's in a tight hole at the moment. Up this end it'll have to be opened out to 12mm. Um, so um, the logic behind this uh, fixture is that um, I can have the, uh, the piece in here and use the rotary table to round that end off and then uh, turn it around on the fixture uh, to round the other end off. As I said, this end's uh, going to be a 6mm uh, uh, bore and this one will be 12 so the, there's a big difference in the uh, ODs on the ends. Um, so I drilled uh, the whole pattern that, you, that is now threaded um, I drilled that with this clamped in place to make sure that the uh, bolt pattern in here lines up with the hole pattern in here. I need to lift, lift this up off here so I can machine all the way around. I don't want to chew into this. So uh, I'll be making some spacers. So that spacer will follow the piece on, on his journey. This is an interim one. Now uh, there is a little bit of movement here, very little. So um, what I did when I set it up was to align it off the side of this um, with that. So um, to put it in position now, 
Right, so hold that over, snug that one down and uh, ditto on this end. Uh, so that's uh, in a position that's uh, repeatable. There's very little end float with this, by the way. Uh, okay, so now I can, uh, I want to actually bore this out to um, 12 millimeters. Um, the reason I want to bore it is, um, as opposed to using um, a reamer, is the bearings that have to be used in the, in the bottom end. These little fellows. Now, you might have noticed it, or I might have mentioned it earlier when I was um, pushing the crank pin into the uh, into the um, crankshaft. Anyway, these guys uh, are right on 12 millimeters, exactly 12 millimeters, and uh, OD that is. And um, if I use a 12 mil reamer, I did a practice. I did a couple of practice, uh, well, several practices, and the 12 mil reamer, at least the one I have, uh, took the just slightly oversized and the, the bearing, the, the bore wouldn't hold the bearing, so that wasn't any good. So that's why I have to, to bore it. And um, I did some practices, as I, I mentioned, and I've created a sort of a go-no-go -no -go type uh, scenario. So this is um, the, the final fit that I'm looking for, for the bearings. It, it, I could force it, but I don't want to, obviously, here. But this piece is the, um, the size guide. You can see that's a pretty snug fit. But that's that's the whole size I, I want. And then these bearings will be a light press fit into that. Uh, they're pretty skimpy little things, so you <laughs> I think the pressure has to be fairly low. Uh, but. The, um, the bearings have to stay in the conrod with more um, staying power, shall we say, than on the crank pin. Because with the assembly, these bearings will be in the uh, conrod and I've got to push it over the crank pin. And there's a, a little bit of friction between the crank pin and the inner thing. So it's a pretty finely judged um, set of clearances and tolerances. So that's why I made up these uh, um, guides. Uh, anyway, as I'm umming and ahhing a bit here, I'm sorry about that. Just trying to get my thoughts organised. So I need to. That's why I need to bore that instead of using a reamer. Is the long and short of all that. So obviously to do that, I can't do that with the bolt in place. But I have, as you saw, just used this to set it up. And now I can put this uh, around from the back here to clamp it down. So I'll take the bolt out here now. Um, so that, that's, that'll stay tight. And I'll move, move that space. So I made both of these spaces carefully to exactly the same height. I'll move the spacer back underneath the, the toe clamp here. So that when I do that up, it won't try and twist this. So before doing that up, I'll do a final check with this and make sure that uh, that's in its place against the, the back of that. And I think now we'll be in position for doing the boring operation there. Hopefully I've left enough clearance there. I'll just check that with the ruler. So now it's time to mount the boring head and um, well, actually, I, I could open that out a bit with a bigger drill first, so maybe I'll do that before I bring the boring head into play. Okay, obviously I've changed the setup. Um, the way I had it before with the toe clamp on the back, the spacer was about here. The advantage of this arrangement, uh, apart from being a bit more compact and the clamping force I think is a bit more direct, the spacer is now under my finger so as far away as it can be from the other spacer. The spacers um, weren't made on a, a precision setup, they were just turned off on the lathe. So they are within about 0.005 of each other, height-wise, <coughs> which is pretty close. But the further apart they are, the less they will impact um, the alignment of the hole. So anyway, that's my logic. 
Uh, now, I've uh, opened this out, you'll probably notice, I used, a, I think it was a 2964th drill. Anyway, it's now mic's at about 11.6, uh, and we're shooting for 12. Um, uh, actually, I think we're shooting for 11.99, uh, and uh, you remember I've got, uh, from this trial, I've created some size gauges for myself. Anyway, so now I'm going to start doing some cuts. So I'll advance another 10 index marks, and probably right in your way. And I'll take another 0.1 off the diameter. There's a symphony of lawnmowers going on in the background. It's a public holiday here today. People are catching up on their lawn mowing. Something like 11.7374. All right, bring you back when I'm uh, close to the uh, final cut. All right, we're getting pretty close now. Um, I'm actually shooting for uh, my size gauge here. Mike's at uh, 97, 9.97, and we're on 0.95. So I'll go up by one. He starts in the hole. It's just a little bit tight, I think. And uh, this one shouldn't go in at all. No, he's not interested in going in. Let's try taking a reading. Uh, we're now um, playing around with um, 0 0.005 type numbers, so this is pretty sketchy trying to measure like this. And it's about there somewhere. So we're pretty much on the number. Question is, am I happy with that? Let's just refer back to the way this fits into the test piece. Yeah, it's pretty firm sort of push. Might be ever so slightly tighter. So I'm wondering whether to give it another go at the same setting, but we'll give it a try, I think. Alright, I don't think there's any point measuring it at this stage. The issue is how does this feel? I think that's pretty good. I mean, without a chamfer on the, without a chamfer on the top, I doubt that this will be interested in looking at the hole. Oh, it is. It is thinking about it. So I think that'll be all right. All right. So that's got the uh, hole for the big end bearing sorted. So moving along, I've made up a new spacer to hold up this end, which is now bored out to the 11.98 uh, or whatever it was. So that's a pretty good fit in the hole. And uh, I wanted this to be 8 to match the other um, uh, standoff. don't need this anymore but uh, so I'll, in fact I'll get it out of the way now so I don't hurt myself on it. Yes yeah, so I already had one minor incident today where I caught my hand on a, a cutter didn't want to repeat that experience I'm going to need a washer on that aren't I
So I couldn't find anything suitable in the washer thing, so I just, just knocked one up. A two mil, six mil hole. Right, so I don't need this anymore. Just by the by, this was sitting at an angle, and uh, to deal with that, uh, this is uh, people of bicycles would might recognise this. This is uh, from the front axle, the sort of cone thing for the wheel bearings. I just chopped the top off it, and uh, it made quite a good. Um, what do you call it? Uh, spherical washer substitute. So, uh, I have finally got this Conrod blank mounted the way I want it to be and I can start rounding the ends and putting the shape and the other features on it. So one step I forgot, of course, was uh, facing this and bringing it to thickness. So I'll do that now using my home brewed uh, cutter. So, I'm not sure how well that shows up on the camera, but from where I'm standing, that looks like <laughs> you can see the reflection in there. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive, isn't it, for a homemade cutter. So, I've just done the other side, and got a similar mirror finish. I can't imagine you could get a finish much better than that off a cutter. So, quite happy with that. So, more importantly, I think I hit the mark fairly well for the dimension. We're shooting for 10. At this end, I've got 10.001. Uh, so I'm happy with that. And the other end, ten point oh three. Yeah, ten point oh three. Oh two and a bit. So basically about a thousandth or so uh, difference from one end to the other, but basically pretty much on size. So that's great. So I can put it back into my jig and uh, my fixture and start bringing it to shape. You saw me clean the top and bottom off to get it to, uh, to thickness. I've taken a shaving down each side. Uh, it was about 25 mil. It's now down to nearly 20. Uh, at its widest point when it's finished, it will be 19. So there's a clean, clean up margin there. Now, the uh, picture calls for a fairly uh, large diameter fairing curves at each end. And after a bit of consideration, I decided to try doing that using the boring head. So I've worked out where I need this center to be to um, create the curve. So hopefully it becomes a tangent to the curve going around the other way. Yeah, well, <laughs> it looks good on paper. We'll see. I've done the first uh, pass here, that was, um, I don't know, about 0.8 depth of cut or something. And I've got this set to 1.5 depth of cut now. I've done the other side, 1.5 is pushing it a bit, but we'll get away with it. So we'll take a pass down at uh, with a 1.5 depth of cut. And I'm cutting it at 1000 RPM. I don't know whether that's the optimum speed, but it seems to work, so... Seems to work all right, doesn't it? A wicked burr on the bottom, but I'm not worried about that. Um, so you can see how it's producing those curves. Won't bore you with lots of that. I'll bring you back when we're uh, closer to the final shape. So according to my calculations, this is going to be the last pass. I need to get a, a, a width across here, minimum width of 6.7. And I've mapped this out in a CAD package and worked out the um, to have this cutter set at 28.7 um, uh, 28 and where the centre should be and uh, then my final cut in should be at 17.69 well that's what it says on paper so I've done the 17.69 on that side we'll do the 17.69 on this side and see how close we get to the 6.7 
All right, time to get my homework marked. All right, let's see what we got. 6.7 would be nice. Or something near it. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Now, I wouldn't blame you for not believing it, but uh, it's quite remarkable considering you had to calculate the diameter of the cutter and then the X and Y offset from the origin here and now actually do it and <laughs> finish out exactly on the money. That's unbelievable. But very good, and I'm happy. So moving on now to rounding the little end of the connecting rod and the OD that we're shooting for here is 11.2 millimetres and um, of course I want to try to link up with this curve neatly. According to my calculations I should have to rotate about 122 degrees each side of the centre line. Well that'll give me a, a start position to aim for but anyway I've got a 12 millimetre cutter in and I'll start roughing it down Well, it's cutting all the way around now. All right, bring you back when I'm much closer to the finish. I don't know whether the light's good enough for you to pick up, but there is still, um, you might be able to see it, there is still a, a witness line there. And this side, the, uh, this side is still a bit full. I am going to have to go a little bit further, well I'll choose to go a little bit further I can feel a bit of a lip there so I think maybe I still haven't gone quite far enough or it might be more that I haven't come round quite far enough Oh, I can put a measure of micrometer across that, can't I? Well, that'll help. Oh, I didn't think of that before. So we're shooting for, what did I say? 11.2. Let's see how close we are to that. Yeah, 11, 11 11.08. So I haven't overshot by much, about 0 0.12 or something. All right, well, we'll stop there anyway and finish the rest of that out with a bit of sandpaper. All right, well, not perfect, but I'll have to live with it. Yes, yeah, so the lesson there for the, the other end is to monitor that diameter because uh, my, the reason I felt I needed to go more was mostly because I wasn't actually rotating it round far enough. Uh, you know, my calculation of 200 and whatever it was degrees, obviously 122 degrees was uh, somewhere near it, but obviously not exactly right. Anyway, lesson learnt, and I should be able to do better with this end. So the shank of this thing has to be thinned down a bit. So I start off by doing that around the, the boss for the uh, little end. So I think that was the final pass. That's looking pretty good. So I um, have to turn it over, do the other side, and then turn the whole thing around and repeat those steps on the big end. I'll bring you back when I'm at that stage. So I thought I'd just include a quick shot of how I was uh, setting the boring head up. Basically um, uh, doing a test bore and a bit of scrap. This was an old pulley and I trepaned the hub out of it. And uh, yeah, so uh, just to keep taking cuts, measuring, till I get it uh, set right. <laughs> just in passing, um, this is the first time I've had the milling machine set up with three stations. It's a bit busy. <laughs> right, so I've made some progress. I've got both ends shaped now. 
the OD on this end, I did this one differently and I monitored the OD there quite carefully and so I hit the, the required uh, dimension there, 19 millimetres and um, I've got a, the chamfer sorted as well so now I need to start uh, thinning this lot down to form the shank so I'll do that in two stages the first is to get the thickness this way sorted so I've got to uh, it take, uh, it's down to 2.2 below the uh, upper surface here I need to extend that all across and then of course shape the sides and I think I'm going to use a 12 millimeter uh, end mill for that. Right well I've got my 12mm end mill loaded I'm going to uh, clean this off in two goes uh, well at least two so it's, I've got to take 2.2 off so I'll take a millimetre off to start with so just roam around on there at a millimetre depth of cut Alright, so uh, come down to full depth now. No, that looks alright. These wings will get machined off in the next uh, stage. The, the uh, shank actually is tapered uh, by my calculations of the drawing. The taper is 2.22 uh, degrees uh, off the centre line per side. So I can rotate the, the rotary table obviously by that, but um, you don't have to be off very much uh, to make a difference over 58 millimetres. So I wanted to cross check that. So I set up a dial gauge and if I've got this thing correctly aligned I'll get the same reading at both of the inflection points. So I'll set this one to zero. I'll go over to the other one. 48.22 and hopefully um, we'll be at the same reading over here we're pretty close to it so um, I'm confident now that uh, I've got this aligned as, as good as I'm going to get it so it turns out that the uh, calculated rotation as set using the uh, rotary table was 2.22 uh, degrees, that's 2 degrees 13 minutes and some seconds. What I finished up with was 2 degrees 19 minutes, so pretty close. So that's encouraging when you get to, you know, it's like independent verification of, of something. Anyway, better get on with the milling. That's pretty good. <laughs> very little if any blending going to be needed there. So very happy about that. Alright, we'll flip them over and do the other side. Now I have the Conrod machine to shape. I'm going to tackle putting in these uh, features on the faces of the shank which I imagine are just lightening grooves, as in grooves there to remove unnecessary material and make the Conrod lighter. Somewhat nervous about this I have to say but my method of attack is going to be um, to use a 3mm end mill for most of the work but I don't have a 3mm um, slot drill which I can plunge in but I do have a, a, um, a 1 8 one which is obviously slightly larger so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, plunge that in to create a, an entry point for a 3mm slot drill then I'll try um, well, <laughs> let's see how it all works out. So I forgot to turn the microphone on for this segment. But anyway, so uh, milling the, this slot, I, I started at the big end and I had to um, do a sort of a, a circumferential, a short circumferential uh, slot to create a, um, a convex curve that followed the profile of the, of the boss. And then um, the, the grooves, uh, the side grooves, of course, have to follow the flanks of the conrod. So um, that wasn't particularly difficult to do, but although a bit nerve-wracking, I have to say. Um, the cutter is set to uh, 1.5 millimetres deep. And um, I, I was uh, pleasantly surprised at how well it turned out. Well, that didn't come out too badly. Um, 
I'm not 100% sure that both sides are exactly the same width, but uh, from a quick look they don't look too bad. I'm not going to get excited about it anyway. Looks like it's uh, the main issue is up the top here. It doesn't look too bad down here. But I think that's just under the heading of uh, live with it, Alan. Um, first time I've tried to do anything like this and I didn't find it easy. But it looks like this bit here isn't uh, terribly neat. So I'm not sure uh, how much I can clean that up. But uh, overall, that's not too bad. I'll do the other side now. So the other side worked out alright, but I wanted to see if I could do it better, so I've got a different method this time. I put one um, uh, end mill cut straight up the middle to the end, and at this end it's just the full width of the, of the cut, that, that's where it needs to be. Um, so, and then, uh, for the subsequent cut, I dropped a dowel pin, which you can see in the collet chuck here, uh, down. And use that. And uh, when I did the rotation to get the uh, the side of the correct angle, I fine-tuned the uh, rotation so that the dowel pin was a good fit into the end of the slot. So that guarantees that uh, if I've got uh, whatever I do from this end, the cutter will finish up in the right place at that end. And I think that's given a better result. So I've, I've done the first side. I'm about to do the second side. Yeah, so I think that's given a much better result. The uh, Conrod at this stage has only had um, uh, a quick deburr and a rub with the Scotch Bright. It seems to have come up all right. I'm a bit overworking on it at the moment. When I've got a, a, a bit more inclination, I'll come back possibly and dress these corners off a little bit further. But it's good enough for now. The bearing fits went really well. The uh, bearing was a, a light press fit with a vise into the big end of the conrod and the crank pin was a, an easy push fit into the inner bore. So that's good because the, uh, this uh, uh, conrod is meant to float uh, on there and be held in position uh, longitudinally uh, by the uh, piston. Okay, well I'm quite pleased with the way that turned out, which is just as well because there's an enormous amount of time went into making that. There are a lot of operations, uh, some complicated or tricky setups and uh, multiple tool changes. Uh, it took me a long time making this little devil, so I'm glad I only had to do it once. Uh, still, it's a hobby. It doesn't really matter how long it takes, as long as I'm enjoying myself, which I did. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, will join me on the next one because uh, I think in the next one I'll probably start on the piston and see if I can finish the bottom end of the engine. Anyway, cheers and hopefully I'll see you next time.